Let's proceed now with my next installment of another Across Canada by Story, based upon Doug Gibson's Across Canada by Story. I have my own treasured collection of Inuit art. During the 1963 to 1964 fall and winter, I was hospitalized due to an infected lung, either fungal or tubercular. In a separate wing of the hospital, a number of Inuit were also being treated, and I had bought soapstone carvings from them during my stay. Towards the end of the winter, I was in the tuck shop when Mano came in with his Nanook and her cubs, which I was told by the cashier would cost $35. I noted the word B-A-Y and N-W-T were etched into the base of the bear's sculpture, together with his identification number E-7887. I suspect the bay referred to Frobisher Bay on Baffin Island, which became a Qualuit in 1995 and was designated as the capital of Nunavut, Northwest Territory. Mano was the tallest Inuit I had seen, at about 5 feet 10 inches. His face fell when I said no to the asking price, but when I offered $45, he gave a broad smile and said, Pew yuck! No sooner had the ta transaction taken place than a nurse from the second floor ward, educated in Newfoundland, asked if she could look at the carving that had been done from a single piece of soapstone. You guessed it. I heard the oops as it slipped from her hands onto the counter and broke into two pieces. Fortunately, the manager of the shop had some crazy glue, and it was repaired so that you could not tell it had been broken. Alberta is rich in material to discuss. You may marvel at the ridges and moraines and drumlins of Monroe country on page 160, but I'll match them against the coolies, volcanic tooth, and hoodoos around Dumheller, Alberta any day. On July 18, 1979, my son found a three-foot exposed section of a dinosaur vertebra. A nodding horse head well of page 95 is also most often seen further south of Edmonton. Speaking of Alberta mares, page 96, my great uncle Sandy Hanley, a star hardware store owner, was the mayor of Drumheller from 1930 to 1940, a 10 year term of office. He was unaware that his wife, Mary McGregor, my grandmother's sister, was 14 years older than him until she applied for a passport before their world cruise. He was in for another surprise when their son-in-law wrote the McGregor story, which traced her ancestry through the house of Glengall back to King Alpin, who was the first to rule the Picts and Scots. There is a Banff on page 110, with plenty of moose, goats, and ground squirrels. You say there is no bear in sight, page 112, Here's one within spitting distance of the Banff Springs Hotel. While we are in the area, it is de rigueur to don our Stetsons and head for the Calgary Stampede Parade. Well, there is a band, a Red River cart, Indian chiefs, and much more before we head to the Stampede itself. Then there are the clowns to distract the bulls, bull riding, calf roping, wild bronco riding, and chuck wagon races. We met Diana Gabaldon on August 13th, 2005, when she was signing her books at the Fergus Scottish Festival and Highland Games. Instead of moving north up the east coast of Vancouver Island, I'd like to take you east down the south coast to Ross Bay. It is said that Charles George Ross, 1794 to 1844, 
is Victoria's forgotten person. But the same could also be said for his Métis wife, Isabel Mainville Ross, 1808-1885, who came to Victoria with him in 1843. Chief Trader Charles Ross of the Hudson's Bay Company was in charge of building Fort Victoria, which became the city of Victoria and the provincial capital of British Columbia. He was born in Kincraid, Scot Rossshire, Scotland. After his death, Isabella bought the hundred acres of land for a farm at Ross Bay, the first woman to own property in what is now British Columbia. The Ross Chair Lookout and the Ross Bay Cemetery stand today upon what remains of this land. Ross Bay may be seen behind this photo of some of my internet friends in June of 2002. In 1909, a massive storm washed away part of the cemetery, sending coffins and bodies floating everywhere. Due to the relentless pounding of the ocean's waves, a seawall had to be constructed in 1911 to prevent further erosion. The New Amsterdam could have been that giant cruise ship heading north to Alaska. We docked at Juneau on June 31st, 2000, and I took this photo from the Mount Roberts Tramway. This is a small country. Rufus and B. Churcher were also neighbors of Doug Gibson in Toronto. Rufus was a professor at the University of Toronto from 1957 to 1993 before retiring to Vancouver Island. He is seen here with my wife Patricia when she was awarded her Doctor of Philosophy in 1992. When we were at the faculty club, Rufus told me that when he first came to Toronto, he was a roommate of Norman Emerson, my anthropology professor and founder of the Ontario Archaeological Society. But that's another tale for another time. I think I'll use a picture of tril the trilliums in my backyard as a segue into the next section. <laughs>